Welcome back, and this is Babel. With me today is Arctic Shadow. We bring the Malaysia National Finals Grand Final game number two. This could be it. I mean, I'm excited. FFKG clean sweep today. I don't think yep. they've dropped a single game actually. No, they haven't. <laughs> and this is the kind of uh, this is the kind of power I think that you really need to have coming into the qualifier of every single country, just so that you are convinced and you are ready. For the regionals. Regionals is a new monster altogether. The best team out of every single country is going to play there. And I think that's really, really going to be exciting for me. Yeah, uh, FFKG came into this tournament really confident and it's been showing so far. Uh, haven't dropping a game so far, beating both other teams that were favorites for it, which is Prospector MY as well as Team uh, NTL. Uh, unfortunately for Team NTL, losing in the loser's bracket final to Prospectors MY and allowing these two teams to qualify for the regional finals, which will be happening on the 5th and 6th of March. Uh, it is going to be a very interesting series right now with FFKG up one game. They just need one more win to take home the gold. Yep, that's all they need. They need to just win one more game. They take home the money. They take home the honor, the glory, the bragging rights. You name it, it's all there. So right now, what they need to do is just to, um, I guess, get the draft going. And we actually got the draft ready. So this is game number two, guys. Could be the last one. We'll see. Yep, just waiting to see how it goes. Hopefully, Team FFK Gaming can just keep their composure. <gasps> Whoa! It's going to be Towers of Doom. Yeah, Towers of Doom. <laughs> All right. Uh, I believe this is FFKG's best map. I've seen them play, and I think they have, even in scrims, aside from losing to Relics, I believe they screamed Relics once. Aside from them, they have never dropped a game in Towers of Doom. So I think this is where they are releasing all the big guns here. Yeah, well, um, Towers of Doom... If Prospector is going to win a game, they're going to have to win a game here. But do note, it's actually FFKG to pick this battleground. So this is going to be exciting. Now, Zagara and Diablo getting banned out. They definitely want to ban, a Z want to ban that, uh, Diablo. I think that's good. Zagara getting banned out, I think that's really good as well. She's the best specialist to push in this battleground. Grey main first pick, along with Uther. And on this side, we got Rhaegar, Felstead, Raynor. Uh, I like the Rhaegar pick a lot. I think it's a it's a huge deal. Now I'm not sure if we're actually gonna see Bloodlust coming from Prospector, <laughs> but it's the Falstead. There's the Rainer. Both of those are right click damage. Now maybe Thrall gonna get banned here because I don't think FFKG wants to give Thrall and ETC over to. Uh, sorry, pros don't want to give Thrall and uh, ETC over to FFKG. Out of two, I would actually pick ETC because I already got Rainer. So you can have the ETC. I don't care. Ban the Thrall and it's banned. Murden now. Probably going to get picked up by FFKG. But for them, they banned out Leeming, which says a lot about the mental state. They just don't want to deal with those uh, big range AoE combo damage dealers. Mm -hmm. Jaina is still alive, though, so I will not be surprised if they pick up Jaina here. Though we have not seen them pick it up at any point during this entire tournament so far. Every time they pick up the Grey Maid, they seem to go in another direction here. And it does look like it is, in fact, going to be the Sylvanas. Something that they have practiced, something a, bit, a little bit more closer to home. I don't think they fancy the Jaina, actually, to be honest. Oh man, I don't think that you're. I think you're right. I don't think they like the Jaina. Yeah. How can somebody not like Jaina? Sylvanas is a great pickup. I love Sylvanas. Me and Trixler, for the longest time, we have been the advocates of possession on Towers of Doom. So we really like to see how. If that can actually happen. And it's ridiculous because me and Trixler, where we talk about stuff, we talk about stuff that, uh, that you only dream about. Possession being played, guys. Uh, Bloodlust, you know, Murky, <laughs> and those kind of like, you know, heroes that people don't actually really consider anyway. Here, mm -hmm. Taranda getting picked up. Yes, I was about to say Taranda is a great pick uh, as well. Um, I think they definitely need a good warrior, so Muradin's gone. Uh, it's going to be Johanna or ETC, so it's one of those two, and I don't think it really matters. FFKG, though, they have the willing arrow to cancel ETC, so I'm not too worried if I'm FFKG as well. Uh, they have got Murden, Greymane, Sylvanas. I think they should actually just focus on Pusher. Sylvanas is going to be great. Yep. Well, what do you think the, the last... Uh, it is going to be Lost Vikings. That's, that would be interesting to see here, though. No, that's uh, bad. That yeah, on, bad. On, on a small map like this, I don't think the Lost Vikings is actually going to play a big, a big role. So this is, this is going to be very interesting if FFKG actually go through with this. Or are they just trolling us with the Shadow pick there? Uh, but yeah, over on Team Process, you mentioned it's going to be ETC, Tirande, Reina, Falstad, and Rega. I'm liking their lineup already. Though Team FFKG always proves me wrong when I think that the other team has the better lineup. Uh, will they find a way to make Lost Vikings work if they actually do pick this up? 
have you seen a Viking? <laughs> I mm. I don't think Viking is gonna work. Come on, <laughs> there's nothing to push her. You're just soaking the lane. You don't want to soak the lane. You want to take down the fort. It's it's just not uh, okay. Well, Vikings. There's one thing good about it. That is when the ult has spawn, the Vikings soak the lane. You don't feel very compelled to. Okay. Oh my God. It's still a Viking. Um, you don't feel compelled to take the altar quickly. You can take it slow, which is what I think Savannah's Muradin, Uther, Greymane can do. They all got Holy Radiance. They all got Stumble, range spells that can really disjoin the channeling. Vikings just need to soak up the lane. So they can afford to take it slow. Uh, on the side of Prospector, though, they have two support. So if you're thinking that you can take it slow, the guys on that side have got two sustain, two support. I don't think they're going to be threatened at all by whatever you throw out at them. So... It's just not a good idea to play Vikings here. Um, yeah. I don't know, man. Well, Arctic Shadow, tell me, please, <laughs> show me the light. How is I, Vikings I, gonna win this game? I, <laughs> to be honest, I really don't know either. I've never seen them pick up the Lost Vikings on a map like Towers of Doom as well. I'm really praying it's a misclick or something, or they just ran out of time. So otherwise, they just probably went insane. But yeah, it is gonna be really interesting. I just they they're gonna try and draw out the battles for the towers as as long as they can while Vikings soak and try to get as much of a level advantage as they can. But looking at the team over in Pro uh, Prospectus and why, you know, like you said, you know, they have a lot of potential here to take out Team F. FKG, and I don't think they're gonna let that slide. Um, they can easily take out the Lost Vikings as well. So this is this is gonna be interesting, very very interesting to be to be honest. I'm really curious to see how Team FFKG will, will do will play this one because of all the scrims and all the training that I've seen them go through with this, I've never seen this done before. And maybe it's just their secret strategy, as you mentioned. You know, pe people just pulling out strategies. You know, because it's the Vikings, because there's a Tyrande, because it's a Rhaegar, I'm saying there's a Bloodlust. I'm calling Bloodlust, boys. I don't care. This is Bloodlust. It's gonna happen. Vikings can go home because this is Bloodlust. It's as simple as that. Towers of Doom, we finally get to sleep the dream, boys. This is it. <laughs> so this is the time when your dream is finally gonna happen, right? Yeah, we're gonna see Possession Savannahs, we're gonna see Bloodlust. I'm asking for a lot. I am, but yeah, I'm asking. So you have that Sylvanas uh, going possession, which is like the worst idea possible in the whole world. And you have Bloodlust Dragar, which is actually not viable unless you're up against Vikings. So, yeah. Yeah, this is, this this is going to be... doesn't mm -hmm. make sense anymore. <laughs> uh, in most games, games don't make sense. And again, this is Malaysia Finals. <laughs> as you as mentioned before, time and time again, Malaysians have always... Malaysian teams have always seemed to, you know, surprise you in certain ways. For example... Surprise with me. Yeah, with Leeming always not being picked up, even though it's yeah. not being banned out. You know, it's it's weird. It's really unorthodox, okay. but it, it mixes things up, you know. It's a fresh the, perspective. Um, the last time I casted for Malaysia was the Nexus Championship Malaysia Finals. Mm -hmm. There was a period which everyone in the world said, do not pick Lunara. She's not good. Malaysia mm -hmm. had like six games of Lunara. Yep. And then we go on into uh, this current state of the meta, which people say Greymane's not good for first pick. Guess what? This is the fourth game with Greymane first pick. <laughs> and the whole world saying Li Ming's so good, why is nobody picking Li Ming? She's banned out, second ban, not even first ban. Nobody cares about Li Ming. I, they're saying we want Feldstead, we don't want Li Ming. That's fine. They want the best part? Kilthus, for the longest possible time, being ignored. Being ignored by Malaysians. And now, Jaina, nobody cares about Jaina. Like, all of the heroes that actually win games are not getting picked <laughs> up. So, yes, Malaysia does surprise me. And you wonder why Malaysia is not going to do well in the SE Regional. <laughs> I have to agree somewhat with you there. We have not seen Kiltas banned or picked one time the entire day today. And that has surprised me. Jaina, we've seen it a couple of times, but in this game, it's not banned, not picked either. And we see a Vikings being picked up by FFKG, who's a team that not one time today have played uh, a mage. But somehow, they have made it work and they haven't dropped the game. So, aside from the drafting, you know, we, we've mentioned this before, that personal skill-wise, a lot of Malaysian players are good. But the unorthodox picks like this, could it be a chance? Would you think there is a chance with these unorthodox picks to surprise okay. the other, other regions and, you know, maybe even cause an upset? Is it possible? I have to, well, it is, but I have to say, I'm not saying that I've not seen Vikings on Towers of Doom. I have. 
Okay. But the Vikings that I saw in Towers of Doom did not win the game. So, <laughs> so let's just be honest here. There's a lot of other heroes like Jaina that would have really dealt a lot more work. Hey, Vikings, Vikings can work, guys. It can. But you must be playing against a, a tier two team. Not like you, you don't expect to be playing a serious game of Heroes of the Storm with Vikings on Towers of Doom, and you expect it to be easy. I don't think. I don't think this is like uh, I don't think this is one of those time where it's a surprise strategy that people is like oh my god it's so smart. Um, I may be killing myself at the end of this, but right now it does seem like that the Vikings is not the secret strategy. It we'll have to see. I'm just gonna say we have to see. Yep, definitely here as we jump into the game. The game is about to start. Let's take a look at the red team. We will see Sephiria playing the Sylvanas, Om Nom Nom going to be on the Muradin, Doll Eater playing that Uta, Stuns 84 on the Trump card Lost Vikings, Mofolicious on that Greymane. Yep. So, okay, let's logically look at how this is being done. Uh, Vikings has been played on three battlegrounds mainly. First, mm -hmm. It is uh, Cursed Hollow. Yep. Second, it's Garden, uh, I think, Garden yeah, of Terror, yeah. correct? And then it is Towers of Doom. The main reason for that is that on, in all three battlegrounds, you can actually soak the lane pretty well as Vikings. Mm -hmm. uh, Koreans love to play Vikings on uh, Garden of Terror. Um, I think on Towers of Doom, it should still somehow work. Uh, the, the thing about Vikings is that it provides extra bodies for soaking. So while the objective forces everybody for big, you know, crazy... 5v5 team fight mentality that they really got to fight there. Uh, Vikings soak the lane. Yeah. Even way before the, it's being played on all three battlegrounds, I think in Sky Temple, you also saw Vikings come to uh, fruition by, I think, Liquid in 2015. So, yes, I've seen Vikings play before, but this is why it's not going to work. Because Vikings fundamentally are weak against a Rome-centric comp. And you look at the lineup here from, uh, from Prospector. They have an ETC Taranda. That is as sick of a, a room-centric comp as you can wish for. It has got lockdown, it has got stuns. And the Vikings is also weak against two specific heroes. Felstad, Zeratul. Those two are renowned Vikings hunters. And I'm not saying this because I played in quick match and they work. No, I've seen this in Chinese games, which the Koreans, TNL, one of the best Vikings in the world played by Sniper, that Viking did not win. Why? Because that, that Felstad was just hunting the Vikings the whole time. It, that guy's a great Vikings player, but it's just not good against Felstad. Guess what? Felstad's being picked up here, boys. So yeah. how do you expect me to take this game seriously? <laughs> when I see Felstad, when I see Rome-centric comp, unless they go for Bloodlust, then yes, we have an even game. Because that's both equally bad. But <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's, that's, that's all I have to say here. So the first few altars, Vikings is going to get a lead for sure. But it's going to be up to how ETC roams and how Taranda ganks, as well as how Feldstad uh, catches the, the Baylock, as well as Eric. That's, that's really what's going to matter at the end of the day. So we're now waiting for the game to erase the latency problem, and, okay. uh, and then we go into it. But again, we're having, we're having some lag problem. Uh, I'm not lagging, it's just the play, so it seems like it could be the, it could be the uh, Cyber Cafe problem. Uh, they're solving it right now, so don't worry, they're relogging endlessly. It's just to make sure that the game is smooth. Uh, <laughs> it's a chip fix, and you know, with our budget constraint these days, it's a uh, chip fix is all we can afford. So you can uh, help by donating to us. And <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm just kidding. Yeah, but I, but I have to agree with you on the last Viking picks up. So it, it's it's really weak against that false start. It's not like false start was a last pick kind of thing to counter that Vikings. It was already picked up uh, as the second pickup before Vikings was the final pick of the red team. So this is something that, again, as you mentioned, I've never seen before. So I'm really curious to see how Team FFKG is going to incorporate this into their strategy and maybe by some chance win this. Yeah, I, I'm hoping that my, that my brains get blown apart by this play. So we'll see. Uh, that said, though, we are now looking at... Uh, we actually go through the player's introduction when the game has resumed mm -hmm. so that uh, at least uh, you guys can see who's playing what because right now I got it on my screen, but I don't think that it is actually going to matter anyway. Um, so, strategically speaking, though, I would definitely favor uh, Sylvanas because Sylvanas is a great pick on Towers of Doom. Mm -hmm. She legitly pushes the tower too fast. Yep. Um, so... It really depends on how uh, Prospector plays this. Prospector will really have to, uh, they will really have to just prevent Savannah from pushing. They have to really get a lot of advantage from teamfight. And the problem here 
that I have with Prospectus Teamfight is that you've seen, I think we've seen about three to four games of them playing teamfights right now. Mm -hmm. That teamfight is not on the level of uh, FFKG. I think FFKG has superior teamfight mechanics. And I think that uh, if you want to compare, I would say that Prospectus, um, their teamfight mechanics should be somewhere around the level of NTL. Okay. Which is decent, decently good, but not mind-blowingly epic. Like, you see Thrall Earthquake just now, it was great for one, and it completely flopped the other yep. one. It's, mm -hmm. it's used on one target that can escape. Like, why would you do that? Um, so if you ask me, for them to really rely the entire tournament life on a uh, Rome-centric lineup, that's okay. But if you really want to stop Sylvanas, you're going to have to take team fights. You're going to have to win team fights. And I am very much fearful because I don't think they actually can win team fights uh, in between level 4 and level 10. I think yep. it's going to be quite hard for them to win mm -hmm. a big 5v5 team fight. Yeah. Yep. I have to agree with you there. You see, Team FFKG has just proven time and time again this whole day that they win in team fights. You know, they, they execute the team fights to perfection. Uh, as as in, this, is in the previous game, we saw the ETC being picked up by uh, Team Prospectus as well. How many times was it there where the Ring of Frost missed or the, the Mosh Pit was used on just one hero? So I have to agree with you there. I mean, you're building your lineup around a, a very team fight composition kind of thing, and your team fight isn't the best it's it's gonna be interesting to see uh hopefully they will be able to do it so to push this to a game deciding at least a game deciding third game here yeah it's um i mean this is gonna be the dream call man it's gonna come true yep. we're gonna see bloodlust you just want to see that bloodlust man come on yeah i mean they <laughs> picked the first pick right garden and go into a rainer and felstad i'm thinking that bloodlust is gonna happen i'm very convinced i mean my mind body and soul is ready for a bloodlust game so i think it's gonna happen here if it doesn't happen here, it's never going to happen. <laughs> if it's not going to happen in Malaysia, it's never going to happen anywhere else, right? Yep. Um, that's true. Uh, <laughs> not to say, I actually think that Bloodlust is very, very much viable. I think it is. Uh, the problem with Bloodlust is that the lifesteal kicking at level 20 instead of level 10 um, still makes the right click, you know, heroes very, very weak. Uh, because the meat game you don't have a plan and you generally lose games in a meat game if you don't have a plan. Mm -hmm. Now for for heroes like uh, we talk about the the fact that heroes like Rainer and Felstad's kind of mixed because Felstad is kind of like a hybrid hero so that's fine but particularly heroes like Tychus and Rainer who really rely on the right click damage um, they have to deal with too many things. They have to deal with stuns, they have to deal with misses and it's not like uh, you know their spell counterparts got a lot to deal with anyway. So once again, we are just back into the pause, but this time around, it's a mouse problem. Oh my god! And gosh. we can actually we can actually introduce the players now. So, <laughs> uh, MNGPK. Oh, sorry. On the blue team first, we got Prospecta Malaysia. Uh, this is the team that's currently down all the way. They need to win all three remaining games. And that's two games in the series and a best of one after that to get the money, the top money. MNGPK gonna be playing as the Rainer Deadly Fat Man. There will be playing as your Felstad. Fubbly Wobbly onto Taronda, Exist onto Regar, and FZ FZ playing as the ETC. Yep, and over on the red side, we do see Sephiria on the Sylvanas, Om Nom Nom on the Muradin, Doll Eater on Uther, Stearns on Lost Vikings, and Morphalicious on Greymane. As both teams now making their way towards the bottom, something's about to happen here, Babel. Yep, uh, fight's probably gonna happen here. Uh, Daily Fat Man doing whatever he can, already going in for the burst against Doll Eater, Uther pulling back already. And not much of a, well, surprise here actually, but we are seeing five-man bottom lane aggression because of the Vikings, because this is the advantage that the Vikings provide. Now, Feldstad's going to be on top, so Baylock's going to be very careful because that is a Viking Hunter right there. And he has to pull back. That's going to deny him of some EXP. Mid lane, it's just going to be the Ragar there. But bottom lane, needless to say, Prospector's not going to have an easy game here. Yeah, definitely gonna have an easy game at this bottom with the combination coming out from the Team FFKG and I guess this is their strategy. Sylvanas as well gonna be able to push down those towers really, really quick. FZ, FZ going in with the quick power spike sound on the Sephira, but that's gonna be it as now he's gonna get caught off position and he gets taken down. A bit too aggressive there, I think, by FZ, FZ as he goes in and gets taken down. Yeah, I gotta be very careful when you're playing a uh, one-man shot on a four-man lane. Um, meanwhile, I don't think that Exist should actually share this lane with Olaf. I think he should actually go in. Yeah, there we go. Uh, the lightning's going out. Meanwhile, on this side, Baylock already hiding here. 
he popped a, a run and it's gonna be okay so this is so far still all right first altar gonna be a single altar uh, it's gonna spawn right in the middle there and again you could see the ffkg they don't feel very pressured to go into the altar already because they have the vikings soak the lane it's gonna be up to uh the blue team to really react here fzfc dropping a lot of hp by the way mngpk pulling back by adrenaline rush will kick in exist swings by this could be the uh the turnaround there lending the totem it's gonna be some form of slow daily fat man coming from behind and frontline uther's going down omnum in a lot of trouble right now daily fat man still going in and muradin somehow surviving but exist overextending there some heals coming back out he's gonna be fine Greymane does go down sylvanas is gone and all of a sudden it's a nightmare for ffkg they don't have the exp lead anymore yep not to show what they were doing right there they were too far ahead uh not to, and grayman as well going in after the team was able to actually disengage out uh he cost himself his own life there sylvanas fell as well and muradin somehow was able to survive with like the brink of his life and he will be able to get back away uh alter is going to go in favor of the red team though yep, oh, no, blue and team, sorry. uh okay so blue team got it we are proud to announce that we got new technology that can actually track the history of core previously this was, this was not possible uh we actually have a replay, but I don't think we got a time for that. We are going to hold for it. Okay, actually, we got it. Um, let's go into the replay. So, Red Team is going to push the bottom lane still. And as you can see here, Exist came by. They overstate their welcome. This totem that did a lot of work, a lot of slow. Daily Fairman coming from behind with the extra zone in. But it's actually the fact that everyone on the blue team is already here. And I don't think the Red Team realizes this, but they still wanted to give chase to Exist. And that's a big mistake. Should have just pulled back. Um, Stern swings by with just one Eric also, so that's about it. And that would be where I think Prospectus starts to get a bit of a lead. Now, going back in the real time, we do have with us here uh, a very interesting position where the Vikings still continue to soak the lane. Uh, if you can, if I don't think they're really soaking the lane here, he's just basically afraid of that, of the Griffin already. Bottom lane is still gonna try and apply pressure, but this is the beautiful thing about House of Doom. Even if you do take down the Ford, your enemy can take it back. So, yep. you don't really want to push too hard one lane. You kind of want to make sure that all the forts are down to 50%, and then you win one fight, and then you take down the entire uh, two to three lanes. That's going to be the way to play this battleground. We'll see. All going to spawn in about 10 seconds. Yep. It's going to spawn in about 10 seconds at that bottom lane while the red team is still there to pressure. Uh, we do see the Eric at the bottom as well, just waiting uh, for the rest of the team. But it does look like the red team is going to rotate towards the mid, maybe trying to pick up a kill. Uh, and unfortunately, unable to do so, and they will go back towards that bottom. They don't want to give away this altar as well. Uh, the blue team is not just here just yet. Falstart is on the way. He can at any time fly over, so this could be really, really dangerous for the red team. They have to be careful here. Oh, Eric seems to be in a lot of trouble. And Uther already using the Holy Light onto Eric there. Eric's gonna be fine, but he coming from behind is a great hammering from Daily Fat Man. Two men down already. And that's again why Vikings will not work in his battleground. Yep, as we saw there, Uther just dropping so quickly along with the Eric. And, you know, this is just not looking too good for the red team. They are not that far behind on EXP. But on a map such as Towers of Doom, and you're just trying to get those altars constantly. It's not about pushing. It's not about uh, getting into those, the core. Uh, this is where it's going to work to their disadvantage here. As you can see, Falstad just making his way back towards the top lane. And I don't think there's anything that the Lost Vikings can do about it at the top as well. He's going to probably have to back off. Right, and also you can see that the blue team now is going towards the uh, Halloween hits there. They're probably going to be able to get up to Siege Camp. And Om Nom Nom swings by. Not going to do anything, actually. Uh, Got to be very careful. I think that killing the pumpkin hats is, is a very good idea, but I'm very careful about the flank, though. And FZFZ going in with the power slide already. Om Nom down to about 50% uh, HP there, and we'll be okay. Meanwhile, top lane Stearns is doing whatever he can to suck up the lane. Yep, he's doing his best to just stay in the lane to try and get as much ESP as he can for his team. But the Philly Fat Man is going to spot him out, going to be able to barrel roll over that wall. But Stearns is going to be able to get away. Uh, the oh. middle lane, though, not so fortunate. He is going to fall to Rager, not able to micro this uh, as best as he would oh, like. Oh, man, that's three Vikings. He got a hat trick, all three of them dead. <laughs> that's not very good for them right now. Yeah, Stern's, uh, well, I think it, it's definitely Stern's problem. He he was trying to micro Baylock on top. Baylock somehow still died. Eric died in the bottom lane because he wasn't paying attention. Olaf died to a uh, Regar with lightning shield just bouncing around him. Um, gotta be very careful when you play the Vikings. Uh, that's why Vikings is a high skill cap hero. And it's really, really hard to pull off. 
Yep, definitely. As the red team now waking their way towards the top, trying to catch this Fausta. Daily Fat Man has to be really, really careful. Will he be able to fly away here? Uta gonna spot him out, gonna be able to stun him too. Barrel roll not just gonna be used just yet. Ooh, Shadow Stock. Oh, wow. And he the will jukes. be able to barrel roll over that wall. Yeah, the troops coming out from Daily Fat Man. And he will survive. How did he survive that? My goodness. Oh man, look at that Luna Flare connecting as well. Here comes Hyperion. They're probably gonna do some structural damage here. Exist goes in, lands that uh, Lightning Shield totem behind. That's gonna buy some time and do some damage to the tower in front. But two Alta gonna spawn here. 36 both ways still. FCFZ trying to buy a bit of space here for Fubbly Wobbly to channel up the Alta, but it's not gonna go through. Nice stumble connecting coming up from that uh, Muradin. Meanwhile, Falstead took up the Alta on the left. And we still have Om Nom Nom dropping a lot of HP here as well. MNG PK Libertro, but a three-man mosh pit. And it seems like the whole red team is doing the Harlem Shake there. When they wake up, they're not going to find anyone alive. There goes the Divine Chill. Mofolisha jumps in, not going to get anything done as well. And Central does connect, but Fubbly Wobbly dropping very, very low. Heals himself back up. Two men down on the side of the red team. And it seems like they are not able to get the Alta again. Yep. And the Vikings pick up just starting to show here just how weak it makes this uh, red team here. It's now a one level disadvantage for FFKG. I think this is the first time they're actually behind in the game. And it's all because of the Lost Vikings not able to do anything at all. You, when you have a Lost Vikings, you want to be able to be ahead on levels. But here in this game, you see them way behind. A, level, a full level behind right now. And it's not looking too good for them. But they are going to be able to push down this bottom fort though. Uh, no, they're actually going to leave it up for now and probably head away. Foster are going to be able to fly to that bottom lane and try to defend it for now. Will they be able to pick up a kill on that Lee Fat Man though? He has to be extremely careful. It does look like they are going to be able to get that fort really quick and back off here. Stun's going to be thrown out onto him as well, but that's just going to be it. They're going to be content with picking up that fort and backing off. Yeah, meanwhile, top lane, you can see a lot of aggression coming from Prospecta Hots here. Uh, doing a lot of damage against FFKG. They're all just pulling back, but so far, Vikings have been dying so many times left, right, center. It's a very, very disheartening position for them to be in. Now, meanwhile, you see the Hyperion coming out to be able to trade out the fort. And it is still going on to Mofolicious. Mofolicious trying to stay alive. And there goes the Willing Arrow silencing three targets. But it's not going to mean anything just yet. Ancestral will connect once again. And in the meantime, Exist stays alive. And they will also lose Uther on the red side. Uh, Mighty Gus does not connect. Om Nom Nom is going to be fine. Bottom lane, though, we do have three Pumpkin Heads. Marching down the lane, this is going to mean extra damage to the core if it does connect. Yep. This, this is where I think you can see the, the weakness in FFKG right now. They, they aren't able to take any team fights. Uh, it's just not going their way. and It just feels... It doesn't feel like how like them you know in the previous games that we've seen they've always been a really team fight composition uh with the vikings pickup it just doesn't seem like uh, this is the ffkg that we've seen so far yeah ffkg is a great team i mean the, uh, the mechanics is pretty good but i'm starting to wonder if the vikings pick here is just a fight for them i, I think that maybe vikings you know what maybe you could say that they are really really viable in towers of doom that's fine but uh, so far, we're not witnessing a compelling uh, play coming up from Stearns. And they need to find out what's going on. What's wrong here? Level 13 just hit by the team. They get that talent here. They're, kind of, they're currently even. Um, gonna have to be very careful, though. FCFZ already in a the position there. And Eric dropping the bottom part. Uh, we still see FCFZ going in. And it looks like the Moshpit is going to connect on two targets. No Willinger from Sephiria. But a stun from Om Nom Nom is going to be enough, though. And he uses uh, what looks like the Haymaker to throw one target back out of position and it's gonna be fine though daily family with the mighty gus in front this is gonna be a huge trouble here for the vikings as well as murden the ancestral does connect as well as the divine shield they're all gonna stay safe olaf does go down at the end mofolicious in a lot more trouble doll eater does not have a heal and needs to be able to throw out a heal to keep grayman alive fcfc still giving chase does not have the space for a stun and the red team pulls back out will be fine uh, Altas once again going to his Prospector there, another 4 damage, so far 35 against 16. Yeah, this is really interesting. It's like you see Team Cross uh, in the previous round picking up the map of Black Hearts Bay and you see just Team FFKG steamrolling over them. And this time around with FFKG choosing Towers of Doom, which is a map that's seen them do well on for so many times, you know, it's Team Pros that it's taking a commanding lead. I'm not too sure what's going on here between these two teams, but Team FFKG just really don't seem like themselves here in this game and with this draft as well. There's nothing much they can do about it, you know. There's, they don't really have a strong front line. And with Muradin going hate maker, what do you think about that? Yeah, Muradin not going for Avatar is a really, really questionable pick here. 
Um, I mean, if I can see Haymaker in a game, why can't I see Bloodlust? That's it. Look at the Haymaker. It did nothing. It kept Exis alive. Doll Eater now in a lot more trouble. Probably going down. Will go down. Nom nom nom. Is uh, trying to stay alive here. But he is, again, just basically using Thunderclap and just dying there. Two men down for zero exchange. Level 16 hit by Prospector. Yeah, I'm just going to give Om Nom Nom the benefit of the doubt here. And he misclicked here. Because Hatemaker is not a talent that you, you're going to see usually see in a competitive play. And against this lineup where he needs to be the front line, he needs to be the person tanking everything, he did not get Avatar, which is extremely weird. And Hatemaker is not going to do anything. As you saw there, in fact, it worked against him when he pushed... Uh, you know, Rhaegar away. They were about to kill him and then they pushed him away. I do not agree with that at all. I'm not too sure whether he thought he would have hit into the wall and just stay there or what he was, he was thinking. But yeah, it's just really, really questionable play here by Team FFKG right now. Okay. Um, I mean, if people can misclick, why don't they ever misclick Bloodlust? <laughs> uh, 35 against 16 right now. Two altars spawning on top. Blue team pressurizing the bottom lane. And you see that... Uh, I think FFKG is buying some time here. They can he can actually send a Viking over to summon up the altar in about 12 seconds. That should be pretty much okay. Um, in the meantime, though, there, we still see Savannah's pushing the bottom lane, and Olaf is gonna pull back. He's gonna be fine. 13 kills against one, pretty convincing for me. But I think Prospector's got this. Yeah, Prospector has definitely got a, 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 a strong chokehold on this game. I don't really think FFKG can do anything about it, as now Flash is imminent here. As now Stern's coming in from the backside. Uh, Grey Main, though, taking so much damage, unable to do anything, and that Viking is just going to go down. Uh, Muradin, though, trying his best to stop them uh, from doing anything. Grey just poking them at them, uh, keeping them from actually getting the altar, but that's not going to stop them. Probably Wobby is going to get it, and down goes uh, Muradin. Not going to be able to do anything at all. No avatar to keep him alive, and that's it. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure this game is already GG man yeah it's looking really bad right now 8 HP on the core here for FFKG and Prospector maybe this could be the um, the confidence that they need once again coming to the Towers of Doom game we've lost Vikings I'm really excited but this game right now does feel a little bit too one-sided yeah too one-sided indeed it is you know lost Vikings just not doing anything on this map so far and yeah, it does look like a commanding win for Team Frost. And will this be the confidence boost that they need uh, to continue on in this series? They do still have to win two more games in a row uh, in order to win the entire thing. Uh, it does look like FFKG only has to win just one more game. They have two more times chances to make a mistake. Well, one more chance to make a mistake, so to say. Uh, the game is actually going to be paused now, though. Yep, Rich quit. I, I'm <laughs> calling. And, uh, but... So far, you're right. I mean, we, we are looking at uh, we're looking at a red team in a really, really bad spot. And Prospector, though, they cannot afford to lose any more games. This is going to be it. They're going to have to win three back-to-back -back games mm -hmm. in order to win a championship title here and to also qualify in the best seat coming out from, um, coming out from the Malaysia uh, finals in the C regionals. Um, here, waiting for the teams to get ready again. And we are we are expecting. I mean, I'm I cannot say that I'm expecting Vikings to come back into this game because it looks pretty much done to me. The damage has been done. Uh, I don't think I can actually check the number of death, right? Yeah, actually I can. Vikings 3.75 times. If you do the math, that my friend, every single one kill, uh, one death is five. equal to four. Yeah. So so that is basically. 12 times plus 3, 15 times uh, of Vikings dying. Yep. That's a lot of death. Yep. It's not a very good stat here. Om Nom Nom now nom, getting caught here. Device is going to be thrown onto him. Will they be able to turn this around? Hyperion is going to be used, but Om Nom Nom in trouble. Lots of trouble as he's probably going to get taken. No, he's kept alive here by the Uther. Somehow they are turning this around. Now Rhaegar is going to fall. Each C though going to connect with Tree on his marsh pit. And Greymane is going to fall along with that Uther. Just as we saw a glimpse of hope for the red team, the blue team shuts that down with a really well positioned uh, marsh pit from each C. Yeah. Okay, so top lane goes down at, at, uh, at last as well. We got the uh, altar spawning in the mid lane. That has been a mop-up, man. The play again was really good. I mean, I saw Vikings come back up here, but I just don't think that they were able to win that fight. Um, of course, they still had to work around the marsh pit, which Sylvanas already used the Willing Arrow before the fight began. And they don't have anything apart from that that can actually help keep 
DTC behind another mighty gust. They're buying a lot of time. Four more damage coming up from the boss pit. And this is going to be it. This Alta is going to decide this game's thirds now. Going to have to be very careful. He actually gets the summon off. So they finally will be able to do some damage and also stay alive in this game. Yeah, but I don't think it's going to be enough, of course, with the top four still intact for the blue team. Uh, they have an advantage here. The red team is probably going to have to go to the top and try to take back that port that they lost. Here we see, though, FZF is going to go in with the stun onto that uh, Muradin, but he's just a bit too tanky, and he's going to be able to survive for now. Falstaff's going to fly into the fray of things. Not too sure where Muradin was trying to go there. He actually already escaped, but he went back into the fray of things. Oh. Sakura's going to be able to will and goes away, uh, and there goes the Vikings yet again. Mighty Guy's going to be used onto that Uther, and he's probably not going to survive this. Greymane just poking them a little bit. Here comes the barrel roll by uh, Falstaff, but Divine Shield is going to be used on himself. Uh, will that be enough to keep him alive, though? He will not, in fact, be able to stay alive, and down he goes. Uh, Saphira trying his best to do as much damage as he can along with the Greymane, but that's not going to be enough. Uh, Uther's Ghost is coming out trying to keep them alive, but he's going to go down as well. It's a tree hero wipe for the blue team. Movoli is just coming back yet again, and then going straight into the opponent's. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, it just seems like uh, FFKG does not have a plan anymore. And uh, Savannah's, while very close, nice hunting wave. Unfortunately, still going to get caught out there by the power slide and will go down at the end. That was a very close play again coming up from the Vikings. That would have been a really good save. Um, but now we are looking at uh, four, I think, four forwards in favor here for Prospecta. Only the mid right and the bottom right are still alive here for FFKG. They're gonna try and reclaim the top right, um, but I don't think it's gonna be easy because this is where the blue team is gonna try and extend the lead. Three altars. Four HP. Uh, you do the GG. math. <laughs> There's no way they're gonna be able to defend all three. Uh, alters and they're in fact going to call GG as well here. Uh, just a little bit of sportsmanship to uh, give it a go and let them win this one. So it is going to be brought to a game deciding uh, number three here in this best of three series. Of course, as we mentioned before, Team Pros, they have to win two more games in a row after this one to take the entire thing. So FFKG, they still have one more chance to well, make a mistake, not to make a mistake by picking Vikings here again. So hopefully they won't do the same thing. Okay, they leave Femme just ended the game there. Uh, I don't think picking Vikings is the mistake. I think that play, picking Vikings or picking a hero that you cannot play, uh, that's a mistake. And I feel that Stern's Vikings, I mean, that's more than 20 devs combined. Yep. Um, you should not be having that much amount of death if you're playing the Vikings. So we are looking at, uh, if you could just see there, it's a um, total of four devs. On his Vikings, that's a total of 16 at least, I think. Yeah, yep. no, not, not 20, 16, yeah. Still very close and would say that um, uh, that was a pretty one-sided game. Prospector now brings it back 1-1. They need to win this next game to force out the rubber set uh, in which that they have to win it as well to win the top spot. Yep. FFKG though, I, I would like to applaud uh, their efforts in this game. I'd like to applaud the fact <laughs> that they played... Um, Vikings, which I know it's not easy, and probably it's a, a very niche strategy that I think takes a lot of practice. Mm -hmm. um, on this side, though, I am disappointed once again that there is no bloodlust <laughs> and no possession. Uh, so <laughs> I am just going to insist that bloodlust is the best thing ever invented, and people <laughs> need to realize that. Um <laughs> Okay, so we're going for a break now, and we'll be back again with uh, the third and final game of the Grand Finals before uh, we decide if it's going to be a rubber set or not. Um, but it's going to be the third game of this BO3. We'll be back shortly. See you guys soon. Dropping a lot of HP as well. Thrall will go down at the end. Strip coming in from the back line. Daily Fatman missing the Gilnean cocktail. FCFZ goes in with the Dove Toss. Stuns two man. And a lot more damage coming from that Greymane already. You see, go for the throat being used, but not very effective. Will still go down at the end. And then GPK now getting healed back up by Exist. And the Morales with the aggressive positioning just to make sure that she has enough time to heal up the teammate. But all the jams on the floor. And Sephiria Mofolicious seems like they are still going to come out ahead with the Hungering Arrow pickup.